Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. Now I'm going to talk to you about three ways that you can learn to play the violin fast. And this is part, this is part one um, of the two videos that um, I want to talk to you about this, this topic. But before we do go any further, I just want to tell you about my online violin course, a fabulous violin course that, um, is really amazing and I know a lot of people who don't even know this exists so if you'll just indulge me just for a few moments. My 1 to 30 violin course is a fully comprehensive and professional course that guarantees to take you from a complete beginner to a very decent accomplished intermediate level by the end of it. The course is very simple and it's very easy to understand without the commitment of an in-person tutor which is fantastic really and what most of us want but it does guarantee to still give you the same level as skill that you would get from a private tutor. This course has been based on my 20 odd years of, of private teaching that I've done through the course of my career. The course has been designed so that anyone at any age and any level can follow it. The lessons and videos are very easy to follow and you don't need any prior knowledge of any music or any other instruments or anything whatsoever. The course covers everything from how to hold the violin, how to hold the bow, how to read music, technical exercises to improve your skill and dexterity, music theory, bowing techniques, more complex pieces, more techniques, everything, everything that you could possibly need and much, much more. There really is no other course like this available on the internet and all the reviews on my shop speak for themselves. Basically what I'm trying to say is that my course will take you from this eventually this. The course is 100% downloadable. There are no physical books to ship out, no waiting times or anything like that. As soon as you buy, you can download and get started on the course immediately. It's available worldwide to anyone um, and is available from my shop, www.amsmusicshop.com and is priced at 59.99 US dollars. So basically, once you pay, you can get started straight away. All you're gonna need before you start and download the course is your violin and your enthusiasm. Okay, three ways to learn the violin fast, part one. Number one, I've said this before in many, many videos, but get a good quality violin. I'm not gonna to go too into detail with this and get on my high horse with it, but if you are playing on a very cheap violin, and by a cheap violin, really, I'm gonna say anything less than about $200. You could maybe get away with something, maybe $150, but really if I had it my way, I, I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't recommend anyone to be playing on anything less than a $200 uh, violin, US dollar, I'm, I'm going to be talking about here, simply because you're just not going to get the craftsmanship, you're not going to get the tone, you're not going to sound, you're not going to get anything that is going to be conducive for you learning to play the violin. Now, a lot of you are gonna be st sitting there thinking, I can't afford $200. Okay, so there are other alternatives. Save up the $200 to get a violin, uh, or you can rent 
a, a violin you know renting is is not great is it because it's on the never never and you're not owning that violin but you know renting is great because for a small amount of money you can probably get a better violin than you would do if you were buying one for say two hundred dollars but it also gives you a chance to at least get going for a month or so first before you decide that you want to spend two hundred dollars plus on getting a violin it's probably actually now i think about it it's probably a good way to go to rent because you will be playing on a violin that would be so much better than something that you would actually be able to afford at the time of starting that I would even go so far as to say that you would progress better and faster if, which is the whole point of this video, that you would progress better and faster with a much better instrument. It, you know, people think that a violin is a violin. So I could, you know, this, this is my antique violin worth thousands of dollars and I could hold up a very cheap $50 violin. And most of you would look at that and say, can't really tell the difference between the two. But yes, you can because number one, I can tune this without any problem. The $50 violin, if I had one in my hand, I wouldn't be able to tune. And a lot, I get a lot of comments on a daily basis from you guys saying, I can't tune my violin, it keeps going out of tune. That's one of the main issues that you get with a cheap violin. You cannot tune the violin because the peg box, the peg boxes just keep slipping. You can't even use the fine tuners. The bridges are too straight across, so you're hitting all the other strings. So there's gonna be a lot of frustrations and a lot of technicalities you're gonna to have to get over before you can even learn to read music or you know, before you can even get past lesson five or six on my violin course. You can't even get to lesson one because you can't even tune the violin in the first place. So the better the quality of the violin, I would argue the faster you will learn. Obviously there becomes a point where you know, you don't need to be spending, I'm not saying you need to be spending thousands and thousands on an instrument, but if you can be spending, you know, $500 to $1,000, let's say, let's say you're renting that, I have no idea how much it is to rent a violin on a monthly basis, $50, I've just completely puck, plucked that arbitrary number out of the air. But if you are renting, let's say you are renting for argument's sake, a thousand dollar violin, I promise you there's gonna be no problems with the violin, it's all gonna be on you. And that's great because you can get better at your skill. When you are trying to perfect your own skill and your own techniques, and you're working on a very, very non-responsive violin, i.e. anything less than £200, $200, sorry, and the violin is gonna be very non-responsive, you're fighting constantly, it's a constant fighting battle. So the better your instrument, within reason, the faster you're gonna learn. Okay, now, number two, get the basics down. So the basics are gonna be things like how you're holding the, 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 the violin bow, you wanna make sure that, um, I can link to a video of this, but you wanna make sure that you are holding the violin bow properly, fingers aren't slipping around and you're not changing your grip all the time. Uh, simple posture so are we holding the violin out into the front is the violin hanging down like this we want to make sure the violin is out to the side sorry we want to make sure it's out to the side we want to make sure it's on the shoulder we want to make sure it's nice and flat not too far out not too far to the front you know so basic posture and then things like how um, how how we're holding our, our fingers on the violin we don't want our wrist up like that we want our you know just a nice basic posture and then obviously the basics after that would be things like uh the bow on the string so we want to make sure that we are bowing nice and straight like this and that when we bow we're not bowing like we're sawing a piece of wood like this so make sure that you get your basic basics down so that is things like how to hold the violin properly checking in on that it doesn't hurt to do that every so often making sure that you're holding the bow properly doesn't it uh, doesn't hurt to check in on that as well making sure that your wrist is not up your wrist is down fingers are nice and round fingers are nice and flexible thumb feels comfortable uh we're bowing in the right place we're not bowing all over the strings we're we're keeping nice and straight from the shoulder to the elbow and we're just moving our elbow more or less we can move our arm up but we cannot move our arm any further back than our actual back so we can't move it back like this so make sure you've got those basics because if you don't have those then it's going to cause like a, a a ripple effect so your tone is not going to be good why is your tone not good probably because your 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 bow is wavering about all over the violin and the strings and, and things like that 
Number three, make sure you master note reading. So do not move on uh, until you can read those notes competently. I had a question about this only last week or, or the week before someone was saying about when they get to songbook one, there are no notes written in and, and things like that. It might have been the piano, actually, I think the comment was referring to. And yes, that's that's true. When you are going through the tutorial books in my piano course, I have a piano course as well, by the way. <laughs> when you are going through my piano course uh, in the tutorial books, I've written notes, I've written letters, the letters on the notes. But when you get to the songbook, I've taken that away because I want you to learn to read music. In the violin, it's a little bit differently. We're learning four notes at a time. So we're learning the four open strings, uh, G, D, A and E. We're learning the four first finger notes, A, E, B and F. Then we're learning the second finger notes, the third finger notes, and the fourth finger notes, and we're so on. So we're learning it in groups of four. So you just have to know what the names of the four open strings are. Then you need to know where those are on the sheet music. So when you're looking at a piece of sheet music, you, you'll wanna know where they are. So when you get to lesson five in my course, lesson five is referring to the, the open string notes. So do not move on to lesson six until you are confident that you know where those four notes are. Because then when you move on to lesson six and we're talking about the first finger notes, we're now working on eight notes. So we've got the first four open strings, which we're assuming that you know, and then we're moving on to adding into that the four first finger note so you want to make sure that you know where those are where you place them down on the violin you know what the letter uh, a e b and f for example and you want to know where those notes correspond to on the music so then when we move on to the second finger we're adding in the next four notes so do not move on until you 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 learn and you understand where all those those notes are so if you can't master basic note reading, you're gonna find it very, very difficult to, to learn, far, learn fast, basically. So use the basic, use lessons one to 10, or mainly lessons five, uh, six, seven, eight, and nine in my one to 30 violin course to master how to uh, read the notes. Then once you've done that, that's what songbook one is for. So you've got 10, pieces in this songbook one that is just going on about those uh, all those notes that we've learned from lesson five to ten and this songbook one is going to help you master this so songbook one is where you might struggle a little bit reading the notes but you'll get faster by the time you get to the end of songbook one you will be reading music and you'll be reading pretty much all the notes at this point that you need to know so then you will be ready to move on to book two without any problems at all, at all. Because book two then is starting to work on technical knowledge, uh, scales, arpeggios, uh, note values, note timings. It's gonna add in a lot more music theory and a lot, a lot of other more complicated things that we need to do. So the last thing we wanna be doing when we get to this book is trying to, is trying to learn our basic note reading but this is exactly what my course has been designed for so make sure that you know your note reading whether you're following my course or anybody else's or you're with a teacher just do yourself a favor and make sure you 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 understand and you master note reading once you can read music you can more or less play any kind of piece that you want so thank you very much for watching. All the links will be directly underneath this video. Uh, don't forget to check out part two, which will also be linked underneath this video as well. And I will see you on my next one. Bye.